Hello and welcome to the Simple Med Radiology Lecture Series. My name is Dr. Marcus Judge and I am the Radiology Lead. This is an introduction to radiology. This lecture is aimed at preclinical or phase 1 medical students and allied health professionals and so it is pitched at that level. First, some learning objectives. By the end of this lecture, you should understand what radiology is and what a radiologist does. You should understand the different types of scans that can be done, their basic indications and how they work, including x-rays, ultrasound scans, MRIs and CTs. You should understand the difference between ionizing and non-ionizing imaging and the damage that can be done as a result of ionization on the cells. And you should be aware of the process of scan vetting and scan requesting within a hospital. So what does a radiologist do? A diagnostic radiologist is a medical doctor who approves, sets the parameters for, and then interprets scans. They can sometimes carry out those scans by themselves, but most scans are carried out by radiographers. Some common types of scans include ultrasound scans, plain film radiographs, also known as x-rays, computer tomography scans or CTs, PET scans, which are a combination of CT scans and isotope scans, magnetic resonance imaging scans or MRIs, and various nuclear medicine scans. Ionizing versus non-ionizing scans. Ionization refers to the release of a high energy form of radiation that strips electrons from atoms. Ionizing radiation can cause damage to DNA. Non-ionizing scans either use a lower energy form of electromagnetic radiation or alternative forms of imaging. Ionization is measured in millisieverts or MSV. It is important to note that we are constantly exposed to ionizing background radiation all of the time. This can be a useful fact when discussing with patients who may be concerned about the level of radiation they may receive from their scans. The normal dose of background radiation a person is exposed to per day is around 0.01 millisieverts. Sources of background radiation include radon gas in the air, rocks, food and cosmic rays. A useful way of putting this in perspective is that in a normal transatlantic flight, a person receives 0.33 millisieverts of radiation, which is around 33 days of normal background radiation. This diagram shows the electromagnetic spectrum, including what wavelengths of light are ionizing and non-ionizing. You will notice that ultraviolet is in the ionizing section. And this is why we put sun cream on to protect us from the sun and avoid skin cancer. The mechanisms of ionizing cellular damage are complex. However, they can roughly be broken down into direct and indirect causes. Direct leads to changes and breakages in the DNA. However, indirect leads to the creation of free radicals and reactive oxygen species which cause oxidative stress and damage to cells and proteins within those cells. Down the line, this can lead to replication errors, which can damage the protective mechanisms of cells against cancer and other diseases. We will now cover a number of different scan modalities, how they work and whether they are ionizing or not. Ultrasound is a form of non-ionizing scan. An ultrasound probe and some ultrasound jelly can be used in a ward environment at the bedside or in a specialized environment to give off high frequency sound waves which bounce back to the probe based on the density of the tissue hit and are then displayed on a monitor, usually live. Ultrasound scans are a very useful form of scan. They are fast, can be done at the bedside, are non-invasive and non-ionizing. Examples of use can include in obstetrics for pregnancy scanning, in gallbladders looking for gallstones, 
fast scans can be carried out in A&E to assess for damage from trauma. In echocardiography, assessing the function of the heart. In kidneys, looking particularly for kidney stones, which may not be radiolucent, i.e. may not appear on x-rays or CT scans. When assessing testicular masses, particularly looking for cancer. As using a biopsy on a testicular mass can cause seeding, and so an ultrasound is used as first line in this. And in Doppler artery scan, for checking the patency of arteries. This is an example of an ultrasound scan of a 30-week fetus in the sagittal view. In this view, we can measure the crown rump length, or CRL, which is used to determine the growth of the baby. Next, we will discuss X-rays, or plain film radiographs. These are an ionizing form of scan. They can be carried out at the patient's bedside using a portable X-ray machine or in specialized x-ray rooms. The dose of radiation from an x-ray is generally quite low. For example, a chest x-ray will deliver around 0.1 millisieverts of radiation, or around 10 days of background radiation. This makes these scans very commonly ordered. However, they have limited use in diagnosis and are often used as screening tests before carrying out other tests. The basic way an x-ray machine works is that a patient is positioned between an x-ray source, a source of gamma radiation, and an x-ray detector. Electrons are accelerated under a potential difference or voltage and turned into electromagnetic radiation. This electromagnetic radiation, known as x-rays, travel through the body and are absorbed in differing amounts based on the density of the tissues that they hit. Higher density tissues, i.e. bones which contain calcium, more readily absorb x-rays and therefore produce higher contrasts on the x-ray detector, appearing more white on the radiograph. This radiograph will be a 2D image. Examples of where we might use x-rays include chest x-rays, for example when assessing for a pneumonia, X-rays of the bones to assess for fractures. In fluoroscopy, i.e. barium swallows, which assess for the patency of the esophagus in patients who might be having swallowing difficulties. DEXA scans, which are used to assess bone density for patients who are being investigated for osteoporosis. And mammography, which is used in breast cancer screening. Notes that X-rays have a very low resolution for soft tissue injury. This is an example of a normal chest x-ray. This chest x-ray was carried out with the x-ray machine behind the patient facing forward and is known as a PA or postero anterior view. This is an example of a pelvic or hip x-ray. You might do this scan in a patient who might be frail or had a fall to assess for neck of femur fractures. Next up is computed tomography scans, known as CT scans. These are an ionizing form of scan. These deliver much higher doses of radiation. For example, a CTAP, CT abdomen pelvis, delivers 10 millisieverts or three years of background radiation to the patient. A head CT delivers two millisieverts or eight months of background radiation concentrated at the head. For these reasons, CT scans must be thought about carefully and risk versus reward must be considered. A CT scan uses x-rays. However, Rather than the x-ray source staying put, in this case, the x-ray source rotates around the patient lying within it in a circular donut shape, firing thousands of narrow beams of x-rays from many different angles as it rotates into a parallelly moving x-ray detector. This x-ray detector picks up the x-rays, which have been absorbed based on the density of the tissues they've hit, and feeds it into an image processing model 
which creates a 3D image. This is an example of a CT scanner. As you can see, it looks like a donut in which the patient lies. A CT scan takes only a few minutes usually. This is an example of a CT chest. You can see the coronal, sagittal and axial views. This is a 3D image and can be scrolled through by the radiologist and gives a better example of what is actually happening in the chest and any pathology that might be present. Here you can see an example of a CT chest being scrolled through. Note the difference between the areas of the lung that have air in them, and so are black, and surrounding tissues, which are lighter colours based on their density. Finally, we come on to magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI. This is a non-ionising form of scan. An MRI scanner is a large, powerful magnet in which the patient lies. This powerful magnet created by the MRI scanner causes all of the hydrogen protons found in water and fat in the body to align in the same direction. Radio waves are then sent from the MRI machine and this causes all of these protons to align against the magnetic field. When the radio waves are turned off, the protons return to their original position and send back radio signals. A radio frequency receiver detects these emitted signals and these are processed and created into a high resolution 3D image. This is an example of an MRI scanner, which is quite similar to a CT scanner. Note that an MRI scan can take 10 times longer than a CT scan. It is important to ask patients whether they have any metalwork in their body, including metallic heart valves, as an MRI scanner is a very large magnet and not screening for this can lead to some serious issues. This is an example of an MRI lumbar spine. You can see that the resolution of the soft tissue, including the muscles and the connective fibres, is very high, much higher than you would see on a CT scan. This is a table comparing the four main types of scans that we have discussed today, including the key facts about each and a comparison between all of them. Scan vetting. Scans are generally vetted by a radiologist or reporting radiographer after being requested by the medical team to make sure that the question being asked actually has a chance of being answered. For example, an X-ray knee, given that X-rays have very poor soft tissue visualisation, would not be able to tell the medical team whether a patient has an ACL tear. Afterwards, the scan must be protocoled in the correct way. For example, in a CT scan, whether it is done with contrast or non-contrast. This leads to good allocation of scan time and reduces the amount of ionising radiation patients are put through in case they do not actually need the scan that has been requested. In conclusion, radiologists are doctors who interpret, protocol and vet scans requested by medical teams. Scans can be ionizing or non-ionizing based on exposure to high energy electromagnetic radiation. And ionizing scans must have their risk benefit analyzed prior to being done due to the risk of DNA damage and down the line, potentially cancer. Common imaging modalities include X-rays, ultrasound scans, CT scans and MRI scans, and each has its own role within diagnosis and interpretation. That is the end of this lecture. Be sure to check out simplemed.co.uk for hundreds of free articles, thousands of free questions, and any support with questions you might need. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.